Welcome to Sickbagger's YouTube channel. I'm Steven. Today I'm going to show you how to do a complete three hole oil change from A all the way to B from start to finish on a Milwaukee 8 engine. It's very easy to do. If you've checked out our channel in the past, you'll know that we have a very, very popular 103 three hole oil change video. And if you want to see that, maybe you have a 103 and you just accidentally clicked on this one, click on this link popping up over here and it'll take you over to the 103 three hole oil change. And we also just recently did one on a 103 soft tail. So it's basically the exact same thing. Thing. it's just a little bit different on the motor you got a 103a and you got a 103b which is what's in the soft tail so if you have a soft tail 103 and you want to check out that oil change video you can check that one right there on that link if you just bought a new bike or a new to you bike you can absolutely change the oil if you want to don't let anybody tell you that uh, it's going to void the warranty absolutely nothing that you do to your motorcycle is going to just blanket void the warranty just void the warranty the entire bike um, and a lot of the dealerships now ours is pretty cool about it but a lot of the dealerships just want to get you in that mindset that you bought the bike there and you absolutely have to bring it in there for oil change and that is absolutely not true and the reason why that's not true is because you are covered by the magnuson moss warranty act the only thing that you really absolutely need to do if you're going to do this on your own or maybe have an indie shop do it not a certified harley davidson technician indie shop independent shop or do it yourself keep the receipt the receipt that you bought everything on the back side, I want you to write the date and the time and all of the fluids, the fluid levels that you put into the bike. Just document everything on the back of the receipt. Once you get that done, take that thing and file it away somewhere safe so you can find it later in case something happens to your bike. Now today we're going to be putting Sin 3 oil in this bike in all three holes. I get a lot of questions on that too. At the Harley Davidson dealership, they're going to put Sin 3 in all three holes on your bike unless you request something different or bring your own oils and lubricants. And that being said, before you start cleaning, clacking on your cell phone and on your keyboard to tell me that this is not good oil and you need to use Amazon and you need to use Redline, all that stuff. Remember, we're not getting into that argument today. That's a whole nother deal. So this is what the customer brought me in Sin 3 from Harley Davidson and that's what's going in the bike. So just remember, today is a how-to video and not a what-to video. So pretty much everything that you need to do this is right here on the table. You are gonna need the oil change kit, the oil filter, and an oil filter O-ring kit. You can pick this up just about anywhere. You can get this kit at Harley Davidson's an O-ring kit or you can purchase this stuff on Amazon. I'll put the links down in the description down below to all of the tools that we used here today in case you don't have one of these specific tools. You will need a low profile oil catch pan. I got myself one of these little graduated cylinders like this off of Amazon, I think for three or four bucks. It's marked on the sides for our fluid levels and of course a funnel of some sort. We move on over here to the tools. You're gonna ask yourself, what's this piece of tin foil for? This is just normal household tin foil. We folded this into a long funnel style so we can sneak this up under the oil filter like this because Harley Davidson puts their oil filters up on top like that. And when you pull it out, oil just goes everywhere. So this helps catch it and redirect it towards the oil pan, which we'll get to that here in just a minute. You will need a oil filter wrench like this. This is a 7614, which you can pick up off of Amazon as well. You're gonna need a short and a long extension. You're gonna need some sort of little wire brush like this or any kind of wire brush um, to clean up the threads on the plugs and you will need a inch and foot pound torque wrench which you can also get all of this on amazon you will need a set of hex head allen wrenches like this or just some sort of socket uh, hex head allen wrench like that to take the side of the derby cover off the one that we're going to need out of there for this bike is a t27 you will need a 5 8 inch socket that's to pull all three of the drain plugs so while you're in the kitchen grabbing that tinfoil trying to explain to your significant other one why you're grabbing tinfoil go ahead and reach down in the cabinet and pull out some of her brand new white towels because you are going to have to sop up a lot of oil do not grab your wife's kitchen towels get some old towels because you are going to have to wipe up some oil unless you just absolutely have a death sentence then that's on you other than that that is just about everything that you're going to need probably a little flashlight or a little light when you get up under there sometimes it's hard to see without further ado and let's get over here and get this oil changed so the first thing we're going to do, of course, is get the bike warmed up. Be careful once you get the motor hot that you're not burning yourself on the exhaust. To drain the oil, I really highly recommend that you get the bike in an upright position. You can do this stuff on a jiffy stand, but uh, when you get to draining the oil, go ahead and try to stand the bike up in an upright position if you don't have a jack. Of course, we've got a lift table and then we've got it supported with another uh, lift table jack under here to get the bike upright, but you absolutely don't have to do this on a lift table. Um, if you are going to be servicing 
your motorcycle quite a bit, it's going to behoove you to pick up a motorcycle jack. Get the bike warmed up, get it upright, and then slide your oil pan under the front. So right here on top, on the back of the transmission, you see your starter. Get your transmission right here. This is your transmission fill plug, which we'll be taking out later, and your oil dipstick and your oil fill hole. First thing you want to do is take this and loosen it. You want to give that thing some breathing room. So we just leave it just like that. Just open it, pull it out, let it set. Right down here, you're going to see two plugs. You've got one that's a 5.8 socket. That's obviously going to be the one you're going to pull out. This one over here is kind of recessed flush into the housing there. Do not pull that one. That is not your drain plug. You're going to come over here. This one is your drain plug. So we're going to take our 5.8s. We're going to put it on there. We're going to start loosening that. Now I've got that loose where I can turn that with my fingers. And right now at this point, I'm going to have to pull my light, my camera out. Also, always remember to remove this because I did this once and it didn't work out real good for me. I didn't remove this and drain the oil and it just fills this up and goes everywhere. I walked away and came back and had an absolute mess. So make sure that you take that out. Now, while that's draining, I want you to do a couple of things. You're going to take your oil pan drain plug and you're going to inspect it. That little O-ring right there, these things are super cheap. Do not stick that back in there. Take it off, replace it with a new one. Uh, I've had that old video on there for, man, I don't know, probably four or five years. And I actually got my first comment the other day saying, I've never changed my O-rings. That's just, to me, that's you're just asking for trouble. So uh, these things are super cheap. Like I said, uh, replace that O-ring. You're going to inspect the tip right there. That is magnetic. So if you've got a bunch of metal shavings on there, you got something going on in your engine and you need to get in there and figure out what it is. A little bit is not an issue. These motors are gonna get a little bit of wear and tear. Uh, it's metal on metal inside there. That's why we use oil, right? So a little bit's not that big of a deal, but if you've got a ton of metal shavings on this, you need to get in there and figure out what it is. We're gonna take that old O-ring off like that. We're gonna take our little wire brush. We're just gonna clean up all around this never know who did the last oil change if there's uh, if they use any kind of pipe dope or anything like that see there some leftover o-ring stuff there just clean all this stuff up that all cleaned up brand new ready to go back in gonna bust into our o-ring kit get a new o-ring slide that back on all the way just like that and you're doing all this while the oil's draining so now it's just ready to go as soon as the oil gets drained we're going to go ahead and put this one back in so i was getting ready to change the oil filter and just realized that i forgot to show you one of the tools that we use and it's just this uh, primary funnel that just slides in there and i really highly recommend you get one of these i got this one at harley but you don't have to buy it at harley you can get it on amazon like i said i'll put a link to the description down below you actually have uh, full funnel kits for doing this for like 15 bucks you can get this funnel the funnel that uh, replaces the tin foil thing that we're getting ready to do under here it's just a long funnel and then also just a normal funnel too so um, i'll put all the links in the description down below but for now we're getting ready to change that oil filter and as you can see it's right down here um hopefully you can see that i've got enough light on it but the filter's right down here it's going to be hard for me to get the camera in there and do all this and but you're going to take that tin foil little funnel that we made we're going to just kind of round it out we're going to stick it in there and cup it up underneath that oil filter and get that thing out and hopefully this stuff drains into the pan Regardless, I've done this a couple of hundred times and sometimes this works really good and sometimes you still have to get in there with some rags and clean this stuff up. We're gonna take our oil filter wrench. We're gonna slip it in here. I actually cut the camera there because I was about 0.2 seconds away from making up 14 new cuss words. So um, I wanna address this issue while we're doing this so the oil filter was on way too tight and i've this is not the first time that i've had this come in here i've had them to the point where we have just shredded oil filters trying to get them out of the bike as much as i wanted to call harley i didn't uh, but i wanted to ask them what size air impact wrench they were using to put the oil filters on it, this is very simple and i want you to pay very close attention to this when you're putting your oil filter on your bike you screw it in as soon as it hits that metal, you're going to give it a half of a turn to three quarters of a turn by hand. That's it. Once you've got it a half a turn to three quarters of a turn by hand, you're done. Half of a turn to three quarters of a turn and you're done. So I still have to get this thing out. 
but I have spent the last 20 minutes turning this thing to the point where it stripped, uh, stripped the oil filter in because it's just soft metal and I'm putting all this pressure on it. And finally, the wrench just slipped around the oil filter. So I had to bust out this guy, which I hate using, but the only way to get to it, it's perfect if you're under a truck and you can grab the oil filter like this and turn it, but you can't. So you gotta go on the end of the oil filter like this and turn like this. And eventually I finally got it. The last time this happened, we ended up having to pull the oil cooler, the voltage regulator, everything off the front of the bike and get in there basically with a chisel. I shit you not with a chisel and a hammer and hit the side of the oil filter until it broke loose. Now that I got that rant out of the way, we're gonna pull this over and God knows what's happened to my tin foil down there. I don't back on this now that I've got it loose and hopefully it'll turn. There we go. You can get that filter or you can use this foil. We're going to have a little bit of a mess to clean up either way. <laughs> We're going to turn this and just pull it out like this. Yeah, it's a little bit went into the foil. I'm just going to mop up what little bits left there with a towel. You got to clean that area up anyway. So just get in there with an old dirty towel and clean it up. So now that we have the oil filter out and we've got that area cleaned up in there, you wanna take your rag, get it in there and clean up that edge. You're gonna take a little oil, get it on your finger. You're gonna lube up the end of this rubber gasket right here. Doesn't take a lot. Once you have that lubed up, I'm gonna take my towel in there just one more time. It's got just a little bit more dripping out down there. Slide it in by hand. Don't use a tool. Now, right there, I've hit the rubber onto the metal. You can feel it, it starts to get snug. And I know it can be a real pain to get your hand in there. So it's just super easy to grab one of these and go, oh, that's a half a turn. And you can if you only do it a half of a turn. So take your hand, half a turn right there that's all it needs from there we're going to put our cleaned up plug back in we're going to torque that to 14 to 21 foot pounds that's it right there 14 to 21 foot pounds one ugga dugga one thing i want to mention too i see this on youtube all the time and it absolutely drives me insane when you set your torque wrench to 14 to 21 foot pounds, we set this one at 20 foot pounds. When you're tightening that down and you hear that click, that is it. That is 20 foot pounds. That doesn't mean click, 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 click. You're actually tightening that bolt every time you click that. So you want to give it one ugga dugga, not four. Back over here on the oil dipstick side, we're going to take the oil dipstick out. We're going to wipe it down clean. We're going to inspect this O-ring. Generally, this O-ring doesn't have any damage on it unless this has been way over tightened at some point. But on the Milwaukee 8, the initial oil fill calls for four and a half quarts. And if you know anything about Milwaukee 8s and the blow-by that you get from this system, the oil that sprays out from your breather and gets all over your motor, you're gonna know that the best thing to do is just run it just a little bit low. So on the Milwaukee 8s, I tend to just put four, maybe four and a quarter quarts in, and then we'll let it get warmed up and we'll do a warm check on it and see where we're at there. On this dipstick, you have two oil levels. You can see right here, the center mark is completely different on these. So the top one here is gonna be full hot on Jiffy Stand, and this is gonna be full hot vehicle upright. So that means like we have it right now. Um, when you're filling this back up, once we get everything done, I'll actually start the bike and we'll let everything get warm and we'll let it fill the oil filter because the oil you're putting in here still needs to fill that oil filter. And uh, that's another question that I get a lot too is don't you add a little bit of oil to that filter before you put it on? You absolutely can. I wouldn't put a bunch because it is a sideways filter. It's not like your car that's normally up and down and you can fill it up and put it in there. Um, so you, you don't want to waste a bunch of oil, but you can certainly pour some in there if you want to. The service manual doesn't call for it. Uh, the engine, it will fill the oil filter as soon as you start the engine. So that's not a big deal. You just want to make sure that you start the engine, let it get warm, and then check it on the proper side. If you've got it on the kickstand, check it on one level. If you got the bike upright like we do, then you're going to check it on the other level. So what we're going to do is just initially add four maybe four and a quarter quarts to the bike and then we'll go from there.
Now that you've added your oil, what you want to do is take your dipstick and make sure that it's cleaned off. Now, once again, whether or not you have it on the jiffy stand or upright, that's where you're going to check it on here. But this is a hot check. So make sure that you start the bike, get it warm, and then check your oil. Now, let's move on over to the other side of the bike. Now we're going to move over to the primary chain case lubricant. In your service manual, it's going to talk about dry levels and wet levels. A wet level is just what we're going to do today. You're going to remove this drain plug. You're going to let it drain. You're going to take the inspection cover off, your derby cover. You're going to take this off and you're going to refill it. If you were to take the outer primary cover completely off to do something else on the bike, that's what's referred to as a dry fill. And in the service manual, it's going to tell you it's an approximate measurement when it comes to refilling this. When we get this primary cover off, I'm going to show you what you're going to be looking for in there to make sure that you get it filled up properly and not over full or not enough in there. One important note that I like to make right here is do not pull that drain plug before you pull this derby cover. If you drain all of the fluid out of here and then you get up here to this derby cover and one of these bolts strips out or something like that or just seizes up, you're going to have a really bad day because this is where you put your fluid back in on a Milwaukee 8. Same for the 103. Very important to start with removing the derby cover first. The oil is down here. It's not going to spill out. You'll see behind here there's a big metal plate that holds that fluid in. So take this cover off first and then drain it. So the first thing we're going to do is bust all of these loose. This bike is a T27. You can see how, here how tight that was. And if you've got an older model bike, a lot of times these can get seized up and they're really hard to turn or you can strip them out or bust them. So very important that you do this step first. We put all five of those bolts off to the side. We're going to let our derby cover come off just like that. Get yourself a towel. Go in here and clean up the edge of this. This is that metal plate that I was telling you about. You look right down in there. You've got fluid. Same thing with the inside of the derby cover. We're just going to take our little knife or pick or whatever you got and go ahead and pull that rubber gasket out. We're going to get into our new O-ring kit that we got from Harley Davidson. On this O-ring, you're going to see these little orange nipples that go all the way around that. You have to make sure that that's set. There's no particular way that it goes in there. You just want to make sure that they're pushed all the way in. That's kind of what holds it into the derby cover. And a lot of derby covers on the market have a design or something on the outside. And uh, if you look on the inside, most of them are labeled. Uh, there's some writing on there, the ones from HDR. You can see that, that that is the top. Just put the words up and that's how that goes back on. Now we're looking right down inside the inspection cover there. That little dip right there in the middle, that's going to be like your sight line. It just notched out so you can see down in there a little bit better. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the free video. I just wanted to take a real quick second to let you know how much I appreciate the hell out of every one of you. If you're liking what you see on the channel and you want to see more, it tremendously helps our channel if you just click that like button, hit the subscribe button, and tell your friends about us. You can also find Sick Backers on other social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and even now we have a TikTok, so make sure to look us up over there. Every video that we put out is absolutely free all of the time. We don't have any secret squirrel websites where you have to go and pay us Patreon and all that stuff to, to see certain videos and every time we do a video out here it is absolutely free to you check us out everywhere and tell your friends about us i'm going to let you get back to the video you just want to make sure when you're filling this back up that your fluids are right at the bottom of that pressure plate so that's your pressure plate right there your fluids will come up just to the bottom of that if you overfill it you're going to have issues if you don't get enough in there you're going to have issues so it's not exactly rocket science on this it's okay if you get just a tad bit too much or a tad bit too low you're going to be fine it's just really getting the fluid up onto the pressure plate we're going to have issues you're going to start slipping so just make sure that you're filled up right to the bottom of that once again we're going to take the camera we're going to go straight down underneath see that bolt right in the middle that's your guy it's going to be the same five eights we're going to break this loose We get this where we can just take this out by hand and we're going to let this drain. We're going to let that fluid drain off of that plug because once again, we need to inspect this plug. So on this one, if we get it up in camera, you can see that magnet's picked up a little bit of shavings, but on the primary, that right there is pretty normal. So don't freak out if you got a little bit of shavings like that. Now, if you got some really long shavings or it's sticking up, you know, a half of an inch, you've got some issues going on inside there. But that right there, that little bit of shavings like that, that is absolutely normal. We're going to get our old pocket knife out. We're going to dig out that old rubber 
o-ring take that thing off get our wire brush looks like at some point or another this one had some like uh, pipe dope stuff on it and you can use that in the 103 video that i did uh, just from doing this from a long time old bikes uh, we used to use the some pipe dopes what i always called it put on there with the o-ring just to keep them just to help them from not leaking uh, it's absolutely not necessary on these bikes you can if you want to it's not going to hurt uh, but like i said it's not necessary you just want to get all this cleaned up and get a new o-ring on there of course the service manual says nothing about putting pipe dope on there so uh, it's not like i said it's not called for but you can if you want if there is prior pipe dope on this you need to get all that old stuff off and get your plug looking brand new again like that this goes a lot faster than the oil now we're ready to install that we're going to put our new clean plug back in there same thing on this one 14 to 21 foot pounds one ugga dugga is really not rocket science it even shows you a picture on the service manual to show you where the oil line level is supposed to be. It even shows you a picture in the service manual to show you where the oil line level is supposed to be. It, if you're looking at this, you've got a black and a silver. Basically, you're gonna be on the edge of that black. The edge of that black is gonna get you right up onto the pressure plate like we were talking about a while ago. If you're up in here into the silver, you've got way too much fluid in there. So we're gonna take the graduated cylinder, this is what we use that for because it's hard for me to measure 30 ounces out of this. This is 32 ounces. So we open up a brand new bottle of this, we pour out two ounces, that leaves us 30. I'll start with about 28, 29, and just keep inspecting it until we're just on the bottom of that pressure plate. And it did, it ended up, and it ended up taking the full 30 ounces that it, the uh, service manual actually calls for on a wet fill. Now we're gonna put the derby cover back on. We're gonna make sure that it's in the right place. We're gonna set it up here. I'm gonna take my top one, just get it started by hand, just so it'll hold everything in place. We're gonna run all these in by hand, not torquing them down. Just run them in until they touch. We're gonna take our inch pound torque wrench. On this one, it's 84 to 108 inch pounds. You're gonna to torque this down in a certain sequence. We got one, two, three, four, five. So just remember that torque sequence. One, two, three, four, five five make sure you get that derby cover on flush and even all the way around now we're over to the transmission now you're absolutely in the home stretch right here transmission fill or check drain plug dipstick whatever you want to call it you're going to take this off of the 3 8 allen and get in here i use a short extension just to get up over everything else once you get it broke loose, you can just take it out. This dipstick is the only one that you absolutely have to check on the Jiffy stand. It has a very small tolerance mark between low and full, and this absolutely has to be done on the Jiffy stand. So once we're gonna put our 28 fluid ounces, which is what this calls for, we'll back it off of the lift, we'll get it on the Jiffy stand, and then we'll recheck this again. So because it calls for 28 ounces, and we really need to check it off of the lift, or off of the uh, jack, whatever you have your bike on, you're gonna wanna just put about 27 fluid ounces in there and then check it and go from there once you're on the jiffy stand but that is the first thing you want to do is get that removed now for the drain the transmission we're going to go right below the inspection cover just so you can see where you're at and right there this little guy right here is your transmission drain that was your oil drain this is your transmission drain on them going to take the same five eights and we're going to back this off so we can take it out by hand. We're gonna finish taking this out and we're gonna let this drain. Once again, go ahead and let the oil drip off. Don't wipe it off because you wanna inspect the end of that. That is a magnet on the end of that one as well. Once again, on the transmission, inspecting the transmission plug. A little bit of shavings is pretty normal. This one, again, looks like it had a little pipe dope on it at one point. You can see the, the little flakes of pipe dope coming off that. So 
wire brush get her good and clean and everything cleaned off we're gonna put our new o-ring back on just like that we're ready to put that back in same torque spec on all three of these bolts so it's going to be 14 to 21 i think it was 14 to 21 i think i set mine at like 19. so once this fully drains we'll go ahead and put that back in and torque it down and go back to the other side of the bike and get ready to fill it This calls for 28 fluid ounces. Once again, we're gonna put 27 in there until we get it off and we can check it. 32 ounces in this quart. Once again, graduated cylinder. We're gonna take four ounces out. And once again, yes, they are marked on the side of the bottle. You can pour it out till you see 28. You can keep pouring and looking and pouring and looking, but you can just pour it in there, pour four ounces out, you know you got 28. It's just a lot faster. it down to where I'm going to leave about one ounce in the bottle putting it back in now let's move it off the lift and check it one other quick tip before you move the bike like if you have it on the lift table like this and you've spilt some oil down there make sure to get a good heavy degreaser and get that oil mopped up get that stuff cleaned up because when I get ready to back this off the lift if I roll those tires through a bunch of oil we're gonna have a bad day when we go to ride so just make sure that you get your area cleaned up get all your tools cleaned up before you move the bike now we got the bike on the jiffy stand on a level surface I'm gonna take this off I'm gonna wipe it off run it back in till it stops back it back out just barely on the stick so we knew we'd be like that we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of our fluid like I said you can do it however you want this is how I do it like I said it's a lot easier to put some in than it is to take some out so I always just run it just a little bit short get it down here on the ground go ahead and run the stick all the way in until it stops and back it back out and we are right smack in the middle of the full and add mark so that is perfect and that my friends is all there is to it to change in all three holes on your milwaukee 8 engine very easy to do with a couple of simple tools and a little bit of know-how you can save tons of money and i forgot to mention at the beginning of the video the maintenance schedule for these three holes are different oil is every 5,000 miles primary every 10,000 miles transmission every 20,000 miles i keep it very simple when i'm doing my 103s i just do the 5,000 miles and every 10,000 miles i do the primary and the transmission that way everything's changed and i just like to have a fresh oil change at the beginning of every season so that's completely up to you but that's what the service manual tells you to do 5,000 10,000 20,000 and just remember if you're going to get on here and comment about what's the best oil and all this jazz i've been doing this for a very long time i am absolutely aware of every oil that's on the market and i absolutely know what i think is the best but i'm not going to push that on everybody else you use whatever oil you want to put in your bike this customer wanted to send three so that's what this customer got it's friday afternoon i'm going to go in the house and get myself cleaned up i hope to see you in the next video but until then as always be safe keep your knees in the breeze Thanks for checking out the video. Don't forget to hit that like and that subscribe popping up over here. And don't forget to check out the rest of the channel because we have a ton of bagger related and soft tail videos on our channel. And to get you started, maybe you can check out this one or this one. I'm not really gonna say anything else. You can just click one of those and take it over to another video.